Today I'm going to show you how to build a wicked starter base in Minecraft 1.14. And this is the area that we're going to be doing it in. I mean this is quite a nice little environment, we've got plenty of trees around us, we've got a handful of flowers which are going to come in handy, and I'd say we should probably start it around about here. That's going to be my staircase and I think we're going to create a garden out the front. Alright, so if we just make sure that nothing can actually get into this area. Now this may seem like a waste of wood in the early days of your Minecraft world, but it's definitely worth doing because it kind of gives you a border and a safe space to exit your house because there's nothing worse than leaving your house and instantly walking into a zombie. Or worse still, one of those guys. Now if you really want to step up the security and also make the place a tiny bit prettier, I would suggest placing in some of these berry bushes which will cause damage to any mobs that are standing just outside your fence. Anyway, we now have a kind of walkway coming into the place. This is just for decoration, obviously you don't have to do anything like this if you're really struggling for resources, but it definitely is a nice touch. But I would say the next thing we have to do is create some form of farm out the front here so we can actually start getting ourselves some food. Now potatoes is generally a good way to go because you can cook them relatively easily and you've got a really good food source there. I do not remember potatoes being this tall. Regardless of that, I have to say this area is looking really good already. I mean we haven't even started on the inside and I'm already quite proud of this little place. Now a few things I've added in is a little storage facility for any excess potatoes that you want to keep outside and also a composter so that we can transform some of these potatoes into bone meal if we need it. Anyway, let's start punching through into this area right here and actually start work on the base itself. Now the first thing that I would suggest you build in your brand new base is of course the storage system. The storage system is kind of like the heart of any base, it's going to be where you're spending most of your time. So it would be pretty smart to put it in a fairly accessible location which is exactly why I put it right next to the door. So that you can just run into the base, pick up some items and then run back out and continue what you were doing. Now I would say we should use barrels for this and I think I'm going to have them facing upwards because I think it looks a little bit cooler but the reason that I'm using barrels isn't only because they're brand new and I quite like them but also they're slightly cheaper than chests. Chests use eight bits of wood whereas barrels use six bits of wood and two slabs so it's a tiny tiny bit cheaper but every little helps when you're in the early days of a Minecraft world. I think the style that I'm going for with this starter base is to make it kind of look like a cave but slightly improved so we've got a little bit of cobblestone here and there obviously all of this is super easy to get in the early days and it doesn't take much effort but it really improves the place if you see things like diorite and massive patches here then just take them out and replace them with some cobblestone and it ends up looking 10 times better anyway moving on from the decorative stuff let's get on to some actually functional things getting yourself set up with a decent smelting system early on in the game is going to help you out massively especially now that we have the new furnace types introduced in minecraft 1.14 which is the smoker and the blast furnace it would also be handy to have a pair of those because this means that you get food twice as fast and this means that you smell ores twice as fast. But as we all know, gathering up the things to actually power these furnaces, be it coal or wood, is a little bit of a pain in the backside, so it might be worth investing some time in building up a bamboo farm. Bamboo that was introduced in Minecraft 1.14 can actually be used to fuel furnaces. It's not the best fuel source in the world, I mean you use a lot of bamboo per item, but if you have a farm that automatically does it, then you can get a decent amount. And once you've gathered up all of the resources, this farm should only take you about two minutes to build. So all we need is a line of dirt, that's where our bamboo is going to be going. We're then going to have a line of pistons, so you're going to need five bits of iron and five bits of redstone for that. The rest is wooden cobblestone, which is quite easy to gather. The only thing that could be a bit of a challenge is the observer, because of course you're going to need to go to the nether to gather up some nether quartz to get those. But realistically, it's not it's not too difficult. So then we just need two bits of redstone dust here and two bits of redstone dust here. We actually need a repeater running out of this observer first. And that observer is then going to run it into a block, which is going to power some redstone dust right here. And then we're going to have blocks on either side with redstone dust on either side, just like that. That should power all of our pistons when the bamboo grows in front of the observer. So now all we have to do is create the item collection system, which I've sort of already done. I've got a hopper running out into a barrel that's just underneath this stair right here. So then we just need to run water in from each side and that will cause all of the bamboo to gather up on this hopper and then make its way into the barrel. Now I have actually done some extra decoration to this thing just to make it fit in a little bit more in our cave. And I have to say, I think it looks pretty cool. I mean, this, this is a nice looking place. And I'm hoping that we can continue to make it look nicer as we go on because this next area is going to be pretty important. Now I feel like this base kind of has a natural curve to it. So you kind of come in like this 
and then it feels like you should be able to go around here. So I think we should take out all of these blocks and we should kind of create a little, I guess, sweep around. I don't really know the technical terms for these sorts of things, but we're going to have a little area around the back here, which is going to reveal a few other redstone contraptions and also take us up to the next level. This is looking super cool already. I mean, I absolutely love the way this has come together. I've added in another crafting bench over there because you can't have too many crafting benches. And also I have this barrel with this little hopper behind it. Now the reason that I have this is because we still don't really have a proper food solution. I mean obviously we've got our potato farm out here and that will do an okay job. But we need some way to fully automatically get food and that tends to be a chicken farm. But with that being said, chicken farms are really loud and noisy so I've come up with an idea to kind of put a chicken farm a little ways away outside of the audible zone and then have, have the chicken get funneled in via a water line. I think... <laughs> I think that will really help us out. Now as we're just starting out, we don't have any access to silk touch or ice. So that means we're going to have to be smart about this. You're going to have to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Place in your water source there. And then we're going to need to have a block. And you're going to need to basically stagger your water line. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is where the next water source is going to be going. And we need a block behind it, so your items will go along there. And then you need one more so that your chickens are fully out of the audible range. Then the actual chicken farm itself is going to be pretty simple. So we're going to have a dropper and then a hopper running into that dropper. Then we're going to have a dispenser, which is going to be running out into our slab. This is where our baby chickens are going to be standing, waiting to die. Unfortunately, that's kind of the nature of these things. And then we're going to have a hopper on top of that. That's where our adult chickens are going to be laying eggs into the system. Now, the actual redstone side of things unfortunately we are going to need another comparator so you're going to need a little bit of quartz right there but it's actually really really easy if we just take a look at what I'm doing here we run the comparator signal out into this redstone dust that's going to tell the system that there are items in the inside of the dispenser that need dispensing out we're then going to run that into this comparator right here which is going to create a comparator clock and then we need to run a signal into the side of this dispenser which will then dispense out the eggs emptying the dispenser. We're then also going to make use of the output of that to power our dropper down at the bottom here so that it sends out all of the roast chicken that we have on the inside of the dropper into this water line sending them into the barrel. But we're not quite done just yet because we still need a little lava blade dispenser right here and we're going to make use of some rather strange game mechanics to make this one function. So first off we're going to need some redstone that looks a little bit like this one repeater set to one tick and one repeater set to four ticks. We're then going to need a little regular piston with some sand on top to create a monostable circuit. And then we're going to take a repeater output from this redstone dust, which is going to have a pressure plate on top of it. Now we're in a little bit of a strange situation here because I'm surrounded by trees. But then what we have to do is we actually need to create an area for a chicken to stand in. So I'm going to create a three block long area just like this and we're going to have a chicken on the inside of here and it is going to randomly activate that lava blade every now and again so we're going to need to fire some eggs and hopefully at some point we should get a chicken there we go so he's going to walk back and forth and you'll see that when he does we get a double tick through this dispenser which is amazing so now what we have to do is chuck some lava on the inside of that dispenser and when the chicken walks onto the pressure plate, we will get lava be spat out and then instantly retracted. This is some really, really old school redstone. It's making me laugh. Anyway, we're pretty much almost done now. So this is the chamber where our baby chickens are. So make sure that you enclose that. And then also make sure that you make a chamber for the adult chickens by just creating something a little bit like this and then fire a bunch of eggs into there. And eventually you'll be able to fill it up with chickens that will all lay eggs into the system. So we now have ourselves a working farm. Nice one. Oh, I do feel like it's worth mentioning, you don't have to use glass for any of this stuff. I was just using that for demonstration purposes. Anyway, back over at the base now, I think it's time that we actually added in a nether portal so that we can get access to all of the things that we keep having to use. Now, I think we can all agree that nether portals don't exactly make the nicest noises in Minecraft, so it'd be very nice if we could switch this thing on or off. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to actually place in a dispenser with a flint and steel on the inside, and then we're going to need to place a block with some redstone dust on top, and that is going to be our activator. So that is going to turn on 
our nether portal, but then how, how on earth do we switch it off? That side of things is a tiny bit more complicated. So you need to place a redstone torch on top of this block right here, which is going to be powered by that redstone dust. We're then going to take a piston output from this block and also this redstone torch at the same time, which creates a rather interesting result in that if we watch, the piston quickly retracts and then re-extends. Then we're going to take an output from that piston face using an observer and then run that across into our dispenser, which we're going to put water on the inside of. So if we now watch, flick the lever, we get ourselves another portal, flick it again, and we get a quick dispensing of water that then breaks our portal, which will turn off that horrible noise. So now we can fill in all of these blocks behind it, maybe mix in some cobblestone here and there. And this looks really quite cool. Next up on the agenda is to now go up onto the next floor. So I want to have an upstairs for this place where my bed and everything like that goes so it's kind of kept away from the rest of the base. And the only real way to do that after Minecraft 1.13 is of course bubble elevators. Really, really simple to build and they just look amazing. All we need is two pistons that are three blocks apart and a pressure plate in the center. We're then going to run a redstone input into one of these pistons just a little bit like this. And then we're going to need to run a redstone output into the other piston with a falling edge monostable circuit. To do that, we're going to have a redstone torch on the side of this redstone dust. We're then going to run a repeater into a piston with a piece of sand on top. And then we're going to have another repeater set to four ticks once again, just to increase the length of delay. And that's going to be running out into a block with redstone dust on top and then a block right here. So we should see that when we stand on this pressure plate, that piston will extend. And then when we step off, that piston will fire briefly. Okay, so then we need to get ourselves a magma block and also a piece of soul sand. We need to make sure that our soul sand is on the side that extends first and then the magma is the default position. So when we walk in, the soul sand will be pushed across and will be shot upwards. And then once we get out, the magma will go back across so that we can drop back through our elevator. Oh, now I'm sure all of you already know this, but when you're building up these water elevators, you need to make sure that every piece of water on the inside of them is actually a water source as opposed to just having water at the top that drops down. Anyway, if we try this out, so we drop right the way down to the bottom, that's perfect. Now, does it work properly with the soul sand? Yes. You may be able to tell that I was quite surprised there because I definitely didn't think we had enough delay. Now, if your elevator's a little bit taller than mine and your magma comes back across too early, then I'd suggest adding in a few more repeaters down here. Anyway, here we are on the top level. And as you can see, we're kind of continuing the theme that we had downstairs. We've got a small little storage system with furnaces and a crafting bench, just in case you want to do a little bit of that up here. But... Other than that, it's just going to be a bed. I mean, there's there's not going to be too much that's functional up at the top here because it's always good to keep all your functional things in one area. Otherwise, you drive yourself nuts running around all over the place. So there we go. I guess that is our starter base all done and dusted. Well, I guess, you know... All right, okay, now it's done. And I think we can all agree that this is a pretty impressive starter base. I mean, we've got security, we've got a food farm out the front with extra storage and also the option to convert it into bone meal. We then have a barrel-based storage system, a bamboo-powered furnace array, complete with smokers and also blast furnaces. We've got a remote chicken farm that's off in the distance so that we can't hear the noise of it, but it is actually producing roast chicken, in fact, that roast chicken has actually come through. That is the first roast chicken from the actual farm itself. And then we also have a toggleable nether portal once again so that we don't have to deal with the horrible noise that nether portals make. We have got a bubble elevator which takes us up to the bedroom. And then we've got a few bits and pieces up here that we might potentially need. I'm going to be totally honest, I'm actually pretty proud of myself for this one. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Also, let me know if you like this style of video, a little bit more tutorial based so that you can actually follow along at home. But anyway, I hope that you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.